Hi everyone, it's Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm going to start off today with a confession. I film these videos usually a few days before they air and I blew it. The card base of my card is actually a retired designer paper. Oh, I know, I'm so sorry, but the card itself and the stamp set that I used and the technique are definitely something you're going to be able to use coming forward. So I'm going to ask for your forgiveness just for a tiny bit and it's easily adaptable. I'm going to be teaching you the reflection technique. This technique allows you to mirror an image as if it was a shadow, either on the ground or in the water, and I think you're gonna find it surprisingly easy. Here's the card I'm sharing with you today, and it's using the stamp set called Your Sublime. The images inside that stamp set are lots of fun because they're really whimsical, and you're gonna be surprised at how quick this comes together. This is the designer paper. Yes, that was retired, but you know what? There's some brand new stuff that can easily be colored with your ink pads and I think you're going to really enjoy the project. Remember I offer studio stamps in the mail. You can find it on my online classes tab on my blog so head over there and check it out. Let's get over the stamp table and let's do some reflecting. I have to tell you when I had the idea for this card I knew I wanted to teach you the reflection technique but I thought what sentiment am I going to put on this? And I could not resist the playful words that are in this stamp set. And it's called Happy Happenings. Super cute. There's lots of fun things in here. If you don't like Bonjour Beautiful, I'm sure you'll love Hello Handsome or any of these other ones in here. Good, good purchase um, in your upcoming Stampin' Up! wish list of products. So let's get started and I'll show you how to put this fun card together. The frog image comes from the stamp set You're Sublime, and he's really cute. Doesn't he have attitude? You're going to notice the words are part of the set, but that's not going to even be an issue when we're finished here. You'll need a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I'm using the black archival ink to stamp him on because we're going to ultimately give him a little cutout so that he will fit. I'm going to turn it this way. I think it's going to fit better. This is Cucumber Crush, and I'm going to use the thick end of my marker, and I'm going to color them in. I'm one of those people that when I color, I like to outline. Is anybody else an outliner besides me? When I was a kid, my mom said I even did it then. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to outline him, and I'm going to give you a little tip about coloring in. Now, when you color with markers, you will see the stroke marks. So I recommend that you pick a direction and any way that you're gonna color them in. So I'm gonna do him up and down this time. My original one, I did him sideways. So at least this way, if some of your lines show, they're all gonna be kind of going in the same direction. What I don't recommend is that you just start scribbling any which way, because if you repeat an area when you use your marker, it's actually gonna show up darker. Now, I'm not gonna to be too fussy here for two reasons, because I don't wanna get my head in the camera and I know I'm gonna cut him out, so I'm just gonna fill him in. I'm going to use the Pear Pizzazz marker and I'm going to color in these three spots just so we have a little bit of tone. This would also be a great spot for some glitter or even Wink of Stella. I am going to use a small piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock. This measures one inch by three and one quarter. And this is where I'm going to stamp the words Bonjour Beautiful. And I'm going to put those right here in the center. I'm going to use the Triple Banner Punch to create those banner tips. So I'm going to slide this right up the track all the way in and I'm going to push. So that gives me one end and I'm going to turn it around and do the other end. Remember that this little bit's going to get cut off the ends. You're going to want to make sure that you compensate for this. Oh, I'm going to say a little bit more than a half an inch when you do your banner. Now here's my confession. Brand new catalog just came out June 1st, and I haven't gotten my brand new Ovals Collection framelits yet, but I'm super excited for them to get here. So I'm using a very recently retired large oval punch to create what's going to be my lily pad. So if you have the new oval framelits, please go ahead and use those. You're going to love that. This is going to be the lily pad. And now I'm going to go ahead and take my paper snips and I'm going to cut him out. So you can see we're already eliminating the words here. And we're going to actually cover the words when we do the reflection technique um, actually on the cardstock itself. Now, for those of you that don't like to fussy cut, um, I have a confession to make. I really do like to fussy cut. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Framelits, of course, and punches always make our life more um, simpler. But I have found that fussy cutting can be quite therapeutic. 
you don't want to cut right on the color line. So if this is your first time watching my videos, you'll, you'll know that this is something I will tell you over and over again. You want to cut outside the color line. By doing so, you're not losing the context of your image. You're not going to lose those beautifully stamped lines with any details that are included. So don't be afraid to leave a little white paper around it. This is a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This measures two and a half by three and a half. And again, remember that I always put all the dimensions to my cards and my projects on my website. So head over to my blog and check them out there. This is a piece of window sheet and you can see it's a little stained because I've used it before, but it doesn't matter. You can wipe it clean and use it over and over again. And this is where the reflection is going to come in. I'm going to recommend that you put your pieces on your paper to get just an idea of where you're going to want to stamp this. So you can see that my reflection is going to have to be somewhere mm, around here. If necessary, and it makes you feel more comfortable, go ahead and put a little tiny pencil mark there underneath that lily pad so that you kind of know where it needs to go. I'm going to take that frog stamp once again in the basic black archival ink. I am going to stamp him on the window sheet. Now I'm going to tell you that the window sheet is quite slippery. So you're going to want to have a steady hand. Don't be afraid to experiment and practice. So here's that piece of paper. Remember, it's supposed to be reflection. So we've got to turn it upside down. So I'm putting him near that pencil mark. I'm placing him on my paper. Don't worry about the words, even if it transfers, because we're going to hide that with that little lily pad. My finger is just lightly rubbing over the image. And ladies and gentlemen, if it doesn't come out perfect, don't worry, because guess what? It's a reflection. If you've ever seen your reflection in the water, you're going to know that it looks ripply and not perfect. It looks worn. Perfect. Now, this can easily be wiped off with a tissue with water. I actually place it right on my stamp and scrub on the wet side and then on the dry side. And look at that. There you go. Nice and clean. The next step is to create the water on my card. So I'm going to use the pool party ink pad, flipping it upside down. We made these bottoms flexible so that you can squeeze and put residual ink inside the well of the lid. I'm going to use my aqua painter. Lovely tool because it just unscrews and then you just put tap water down inside. There's no need to use a paintbrush and a cup of water anymore. This eliminates lots of drips. Now I'm going to tell you I'm going to take this little bit and I'm going to make sure it's good and runny. And I am literally going to just swish it on here. I don't want to saturate the paper too much in any one direction. And if you do, don't even worry about it because it's supposed to look like it's been underwater. So you don't want clean and neat. You want messy and slopped on. And when you're satisfied with what you've got, just go ahead and stop. So I'm good there. You're going to hold this over your stamp and scrub. It's not going to fit in the view of my camera because of the space I'm filming in, but you'll squeeze it. Water will run through the bristles, which will clean out the water and color that's on the tip of the brush. I like to pinch my aqua painter together and then I like to recap it. That just makes sure all the little hairs on that brush stay together nicely. I'm going to give this another minute to dry and while it's doing so, I am going to punch out from the Tree Builder Punch a little tiny flower for my lily pad. This is just a scrap piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock and I'm just going to stick that corner in there. That's really all we need. And I'm going to pop out one of those. Okay, now we're going to start assembling. It's really not as hard as it looks, is it? Okay, so I'm going to put a little snail adhesive on the back of my lily pad. And I'm going to mount that near my pencil mark. Remember, my pencil mark is here, so I want to make sure I'm covering that up. And then I'm going to put a few dimensionals on the back of my frog. The reason I didn't push this down too hard is I wanted to make sure that if I needed to manipulate it, I could actually lift it and do so. So we've got a couple dimensionals here. I'll take off the paper backing. And we are going to mount our little frog. Now it's important when you do this that you make sure you mimic all the same body parts. So he's got, um, what are we calling these guys? His little feet here and here. So again, it's been mimicked. Here comes that little tiny flower that we punched out from the Tree Builder Punch. And we're going to use a little glue dot. I'm going to press that right on top of there and then pull that off. And I'm going to put my flower back here on my lily pad. And I thought it looked kind of plain. So how about we add a little pearl? 
I find these really difficult to get off with my fingernails, so my paper piercing tool is my best friend. So we're gonna lift that and we're gonna stick that right here in the middle. So look, that part's already done. Let's go ahead and mount it on a layer and get the cart finished up. This is also Daffodil Delight cardstock. This one measures two and five eighths by three and five eighths. I just have a tiny, tiny border of this yellow color around my card. I don't wanna take away too much from that really pretty um, cucumber background. And now we're gonna start putting together the base. This is Whisper White measuring five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm a big fan of my bone folder for a nice crisp edge. This is the retired designer paper called Color Me Irresistible. Now I'm also gonna tell you there's brand new designer paper that's just as beautiful, that's white, that you can color beautifully with some new sponge applicators, daubers, or sponges. This is going to get mounted here. So don't let this little tie, oops, there's a dimensional. Don't let this retired piece of uh, cucumber crush paper throw you because this can easily be substituted. And then I am going to mount this flat on the back. So I'm gonna put some adhesive here and here. I'm gonna move that up so my greeting will have plenty of room. I'm gonna rub from the back to make sure it's good and stuck. Remember our banner? We're gonna use two dimensionals on the back side of this. We're gonna put those here and here. And I am gonna mount this near the bottom. And he is all done. Is that not so cute? I have to tell you, um, I create lots and lots of projects. I have to say this is probably one of my favorites. Love the reflection technique. Here's my original. Here's the one we made today. Don't forget to head over to my blog for all the pictures and the cutting dimensions. And while you're there, make sure you click on my online classes tab. There's lots of fun things for you there, including PDF tutorials and of course, stamps in the mail. So glad you've joined me everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.